So today we're going to go ahead and continue in our series in Matthew. Uh, we're looking, though, at chapter 28, and we're looking at verses 1 through 10. And I'm just going to go ahead and read part of that for us as we move into this blessed Easter day, okay? Matthew tells us this. After the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and they fell like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he is not here. He has risen, just as he said. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, look, I want to be the first here to wish you today a happy new year. Now, that may not be as strange a thing to say as you might think right off. Uh, because, for one thing, spring is in the air, right? Flowers are blooming. Flowers are even blooming on an inanimate object, the cross. Birds are singing. We're told that youth's, you know, mind is turning to love. And the rest of us are thinking about baseball. But it is like a New Year's Day in the church because this is the day that for those of us who have a world view that is bound by or informed by the Bible, who really believe that Scripture is God's revealed Word to His people, and who believe in particular that the story of Jesus is the story of God's love affair with people, for those of us, it is Happy Easter and a Happy New Year. <laughs> because today is the day that we believe God raised Jesus from the dead. It's the day that we celebrate that He has risen. It's the day that we celebrate His new life and our new life in Him. It's the day that we celebrate because He lives, we live in a whole new world, a resurrection world where anything, anything, anything is possible. And that is a good thing. For us to remember today. It's a good thing for us to believe. It's a good thing for us to re-believe. If maybe over this last year our faith has been buffeted. Or maybe a shadow has been thrown over that faith. Or maybe that faith has become a little dampened. Today's a good day to believe. It's a good day to re-believe. He is risen. And anything is possible. If you are in that place today where your faith is a little down, maybe there is a little bit of a shadow over that faith, I want you to know you are in excellent company today because you are in the company of people like Jesus' very first disciples on that very first Easter. You know, this last month we've been talking about how it was, how it went down in that last week of Jesus' life, how his disciples were so excited and they were so optimistic and they believed like crazy in Jesus. They believed that Jesus was the Messiah who was sent by God, who was going to establish an earthly kingdom, and those people who followed him were going to be at the vanguard of that kingdom. And they came into Jerusalem during this very time, this Passover week. And there were crowds there waiting for Jesus. They were so enthusiastic, and they greeted him as a king, and they welcomed him as a conquering hero. They said, Hosanna, save us, right? They were so excited. They believed, they believed, they believed, they believed, they believed. But then, the events started to take a southward turn. Jesus was arrested. He was taken in. He was charged. He was tried. He was sentenced to die on a cross, the cruelest death possible. And all those disciples, 
those believers, those who had been promised so much, who believed what Jesus said, that in his new kingdom, it would be they, those who were broken, those who were hopeless, those who needed God the most. It was they who would be most blessed in his kingdom. Those people had to watch as Jesus, the one they loved, who loved them, the one they believed in, was nailed to a cross. And they watched as he breathed his last, as they took his body down from that cross and laid it in a tomb and rolled a giant stone in front of that tomb. Listen. The darkness that permeated that tomb, if you can close your eyes, if you can imagine the darkest dark, it's that kind of darkness that filled the hearts of those disciples. On that night, and the next day, and into the next night, nobody believed in Jesus. Not his disciples, not his friends. Certainly not the people who lined the streets and hailed him as a king and welcomed him as a conquering hero. All their hope, their expectations, their belief was as dead as Jesus. When Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went up to the tomb in the pre-dawn darkness of that first Easter their only hope was that they might find someone who could move a big stone. And their only expectation was that they were going to embalm the body of their friend. But then, as they approached that tomb, the earth shook. <laughs> and through that darkness, through that, that pre-dawn darkness, they could see. Something going on at the tomb. That stone had been moved. It was moved. And they approached. And they saw that there was a man there. And he's dressed in white. And they knew. They recognized him as an angel. And that angel said, do not be afraid. He said, yeah, I know that you've come looking for Jesus who was crucified. But he is not here. He is risen. Just as he said he would. Now go and tell the disciples. Go and tell that he lives. And so they went. And Scripture says they went. And they're filled with two things. They're filled with fear and they're filled with joy. I don't know. That is, a, that's a, that is some combo. They're filled with fear and they're filled with joy. And I don't know if they're talking back and forth about, hey, what are we going to tell the disciples first? Are we going to tell them about the stone or the angel or the earthquake? But that decision was made for them in the next moment because suddenly, Scripture says, they saw Jesus. Amen? Let's say that. They saw Jesus. They saw him. And Jesus says, greetings. <laughs> Which, for me, tells me a little bit about Jesus. Number one, Jesus has a sense of humor. And Jesus loved his life among his people. Because, I mean, to say greetings, it's kind of like saying peace, shalom. But in our vernacular, it's like saying howdy, howdy. <laughs> Look who's here. Oh, but those women, they see Jesus. And Scripture says they fall down to their knees and they grab hold of his feet. And they worship him. And get this, I don't want to miss this. Every single gospel writer, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, every authoritative biographer of Jesus' life says the same thing. When they met Jesus, they touched him. This was not a ghost, not an apparition. It's not a spiritual sort of vision. This was Jesus in space, in time, in body. And man, they grabbed hold of that body. And they worshipped him. And Jesus. Jesus gives them 
these women, these women who just a moment before did not believe but now re-believed, he gives them his first command. In the dawn of a new era, the dawn of a new year, his first command. He says, go, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Go. Do not be afraid. Go and see me. It's like a road map. A road map by which these believers and re-believers and you and I can navigate our way through a resurrection world where anything can happen. As we sit here at the beginning of a new year, and this is a new year. This is the beginning of the church year. As we sit here at the beginning of this new year, we may find ourselves looking back a little bit and thinking, what a bad year we just passed. And there are a lot of reasons for that. There's been a lot of uncertainty, a lot of suffering. There's been a, a lot of stress in this last year. Now, it's been a mixed bag for most people. Some people have discovered some pretty cool things, some new opportunities. They've discovered that they can work from home pretty efficiently. They can spend a little more time with their families. That's been a positive. Uh, some people have discovered that they don't have to really live in these big overcrowded cities. They can move a little bit outside where maybe life is a little slower. And maybe they can find a little bit of that peace, a little bit of that silence that I think we all are longing for. Others have discovered that taking charge of their kids' education has motivated them to be more involved, to think those things through. How do they want their kids educated? All those things are positive things, and they're, they're opportunities. But let's not kid ourselves. At the same time, and sometimes within those same families, there's been a lot of suffering and a lot of difficulty. People have lost their jobs. They don't know what they're really going to do next. People have lost their businesses, everything that they put their savings into. They don't know if they're going to be able to regroup and start again. Other people have lost loved ones. And oftentimes they lost loved ones and they were unable to see them, be with them at the end. Many people have suffered with depression and anxiety and all that goes along with loneliness and isolation, all those things. But listen, for us, for we Christians, we who believe that this is the beginning of a new year, for us, every single one of those difficulties, every single one of those opportunities presents a challenge to us and asks us a question. It raises a question. How are we going to move forward? How are we going to take our next steps into whatever future is out there for us? And, and it, it, it may be, you know, a uncharted territory. How are we going to move forward? Well, I think Jesus reminds us that, number one, we do want to move forward with the, with the, with the mindset that we live in this resurrection world where anything is possible. And he provides a roadmap for each and every one of us to move forward. And it begins just as he says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Look, we live in a resurrection world where even death does not have the last word. And you know what else doesn't have the last word? Our past. In a resurrection world, we are freed from our past. No matter what we have done, no matter how we think we have messed up, hearts can be changed, attitudes can be refreshed, hope can be renewed because we live in a resurrection world. We need not be afraid, and we need not be afraid of the past, and we need not be afraid to step forward. And go forward with confidence, which is his next step. Just go. Go. 
Now you'll notice that Jesus tells his disciples to go where? Galilee. And why does he do that, I wonder? Do you think it's because maybe that's where they first met Jesus? That's where they first kindled up their faith? Jesus says, go, and he says that to us too. No matter where we are today, whether we believe that we're we're strong believers or whether we're in need of a little re-belief today, go, but go back first to the beginnings of our faith. When we grab hold of Jesus, we know that we can go forward with confidence because just as he said to his disciples, Just as he said, I'm going to lead you. I'm leading you. So be not afraid. Go forward with Jesus. Let him lead. And then finally, he says, see me. He says to those, those disciples, go there and you'll see me. Now, why would he want to say that? Well, look, to see somebody is to be with them. And that's Jesus' plan for them, that they should be with him. And guess what? That's God's plan for you and for me, to be with him today, to be with him into eternity. Jesus died on that cross. Remember, Jesus died on that cross, okay? Jesus died on that cross to wipe away the sin that separates us from God. And when we grab hold of that by faith, that is wiped away, and we are reconciled with God. We can be with God. And when we're with God, guess what he does for us? He helps us to love him, to love others, and to love ourselves. And as I've said before, that one might be the hardest nut Of all to crack, to love yourself, to love better. We're called, be not afraid, go see him and see him every day in Scripture, in the Word, in our prayers, and by the presence of the Holy Spirit who is with us all the time when we call on him to be with us. Jesus says, look, because I live, you live, I live in a resurrection world, and anything is possible. Whatever your challenges, whatever your difficulties, whatever your fears, whatever your losses, whatever your desires, whatever your hopes, and Jesus says, be not afraid, go, see me. Be with me. It's the road map to living in his resurrection world. Look, this is the dawn of a new day. This is the dawn of a new year. In a resurrection world where truly, truly, Jesus could die and be raised again. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is a resurrection world where stones are moved out of the way, obstacles are blown out of the way, where Jesus appears. He appeared to two women. The Scripture says he appeared to Peter, then he appeared to the other disciples, and then he appeared to 500 other followers, and he continues to appear today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. He continues to be with us today. It's a resurrection world where we can reclaim our dreams, where we can be reconciled with our past, where we can be at peace with others and reborn in Christ. Amen? This is a resurrection world. It's a resurrection world. But for you and for me, this New Year's, anything. It's possible. Amen. So next week, we're going to have a uh, conference-supplied worship. We're going to take a little time off here and start getting retooled for what's coming next for us in the church. But this week, I want you all to rest in the glory of this Easter. Rest in the belief, or maybe for some of us, uh, the re-belief. We live in this resurrection world. 
Because Jesus lives. Because he is risen. He has risen indeed. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, today we're going